Hey, what's up, guys? I am reacting to top 10 extremely powerful Terminator models. Now, um, please don't say anything about the Dark Fate situation. I know it's a terrible movie. We're not going to get into that. I just want to see what type of Terminators they have, okay? I just want to see. Because uh, I did go and rewatch some of the older Terminators. They are better. Uh, but Genesis, they have this weird Terminator that can, like, turn into dust. So, it, it definitely got me excited to, like, learn more about the Terminator universe and things like that. Ah, Terminator. Top 10 Extremely Powerful Terminator Mon- Come on! Don't do me like that. From 1984 to a matter of days ago, our screens have been consistently blessed with expertly designed killing machines courtesy of our favorite robot overlord, Skynet. The defense network which gained sentience and immediately decided to destroy its human creators built the physical Terminator units, almost always identified by the letter T preceding a simple serial number, to kill any remaining humans after can you imagine like is after Skynet's first assault? Can you imagine if AI like once we get it all down to where it needs to like once it gets developed enough and it starts thinking for itself? Imagine if it just immediately decides, oh, I want to kill these things. I do not like humans. That would suck. With humanity's stockpile of nuclear weapons, keeping track of all the models that have sprung up over the decades can be a bit tricky especially considering how similar their names and designs often are. We've cherry-picked the top 10 most powerful and ranked them for you. T1. An early prototype for the many future designs that would go on to carry the T moniker in the confusing timeline of the Terminator franchise, that is, as well as a few that didn't. The T-1 first appeared in 2003's Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines and was a relatively small autonomous tank capable of patrolling corridors inside a building with its two miniguns. Clearly the basis for the unforgettably imposing hunter-killer tanks first seen in flashbacks from the original Terminator. The T-1 is considerably less intimidating and if we're being completely honest, kind of silly looking to the point of almost being comical it <laughs> probably has something to do with their little heads and it looks like they do look where they, they look like they're easily defeatable like if you throw a grenade at its head and get it stuck in the wires of its neck you can just blow that thing up hunch looking shoulders t600 <laughs> With the T-600, Skynet stopped relying on designs that existed before its revolt against humanity and began to develop infiltration units to finally wipe out that pesky resistance. Similar to previous humanoid Terminator models, they were first mentioned by Kyle Reese in the original Terminator and noted for how easy they were to spot. Its camouflage was only a rudimentary rubber skin, but whatever it lacked in authenticity was more than made up by its sheer terror that it inspired. In pristine condition, the T-600 is already a pretty horrifying idea. A giant lifelike doll made to kill you. But, with wear and decay, the models only became scarier and scarier. Their worn rubber skin and human clothing make them seem like robot zombies. T-800 The real breakthrough of Skynet's designs for infiltration. Yeah, the T-800 is like the most common model. Everyone knows what a T-800 is. People who've never seen Terminator know what a T-800 is, okay? It's the most common design by uh, Skynet units, the T-800 had its chassis covered by living human tissue and hair. 
This made the T-800 all the better at getting past human and animal resistance guards due to the minute details afforded by the living tissue such as body heat and sweat. The tissue also provided the all-important benefit of allowing the T-800 to travel through time, a privilege reserved only for living organisms until then. Their durability is well documented through battles where the T-800 is shown to power through large explosions, molten metal, and all- When you're an AI and you discover time travel. All matter of small arms fire, as well as direct hits from a grenade launcher. It was established in Terminator Genesis, however, that a well-placed .50 caliber round to its power source would take it down fairly swiftly. T-850 I'm back. As the name would suggest, the T-850 is a marginal upgrade on the T-800 model. Featuring similar overall design, the T-850 was an improvement to the T-800 model due mostly to alterations made to its living tissue component. The skin on the T-850 not only healed faster, it was more easily peeled away to provide access for maintenance. Appearing as the reprogrammed Terminator sent back to protect John Connor and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. The model was also known to have shown improvements in software designed for human interaction as well as some basic hardware upgrade. The T850 was more equipped to deal with human psychology and behavior and was also given two power sources as opposed to the T800's one power source. This comes in handy when you need to remove one to shove in another Terminator's mouth for an effective kill. Marcus Right. So Mark is right. They say that he's not technically a Terminator because he still has his own brain. Like technically, he just has bionic implants. In one of Skynet's more undeniably convoluted plans, Marcus Wright was a human being from the early 21st century who was executed for murder and had his corpse rebuilt into a unique Terminator. The result was an unwitting infiltration unit so convincing that the unit itself didn't even know that it wasn't human. The endoskeleton between Marcus Wright's human tissue was custom built to house what would ultimately be his greatest weapon and most valuable assets, his human brain and heart. The brain was able to rebel against Skynet and defeat its plans while the heart was ultimately transplanted to save John Connor's life. Marcus's human mind may be a tactical hindrance in that it subconsciously holds him back from the fullest extent of his robotic abilities most of the time, but he's shown to be strong enough to rip a T-800's head clean off. T-900 Twice as fast and twice as strong as previous models, the T-900 was designed by Skynet specifically for the purpose of hunting and destroying other Terminators. It was a response to the human resistance tactic of reprogramming captured Terminators for their own purposes, such as the reprogrammed T-800 and T-850 sent back to protect John Connor's future and Terminator 2. Judgment Day, and Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, respectively. The T-900 only makes a brief cameo in the background of the Cyberdyne Labs in Rise of the Machine, but the audience is given a much better look at the enhanced model that the T-900 provided the basis for, the thoroughly tricked out TX. TX. The big bad of Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. The TX's interior is similar to that of a T-900 with some added goodies. Most notably, a number of weapons hidden in its arms, including a powerful plasma cannon. The Terminator's exterior, however, was programmable liquid metal. Its smaller chassis allowed it and its infiltration capacities to impersonate much more slender human beings than that of the standard look of a bodybuilder from rural Australia. Austria, such as woman. This leads to John Connor dubbing it the Terminatrix. 
If the TX sounds like overkill, that's because it is. On top of its weapon systems, the TX also has the ability to wirelessly connect to computer systems and bring them under its command, as well as DNA sampling abilities, leading to a pretty gross scene where you see one lick a bloody bandage. Despite all of its add-ons though, it's still taken out by a humble T850 that's operating at half power. T1000 an earlier model than the T. Oh yeah, the T1000. Yeah, it has that liquid metal, but it doesn't. I don't think it has a skeleton. I don't think, or I don't think the skeleton is separable or something like that. I don't know. X. I think. I think it's completely liquid. I think so. T1000 is simpler and better in every way. It's pure mimetic liquid metal, meaning it can transform into anyone or anything, provided that it isn't a machine with moving parts. The lack of a chassis also means that it's a lot harder to knock back. The most damage that the unit can sustain, outside of being subjected to temperatures hot enough to melt it completely, is to have the main bulk of its mass split apart or torn by large force. The T-1000 makes its first appearance in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and its lack of fancy weapons proves to be no impediment to its killing capabilities, preferring to reshape its arms into bladed weapons for an up-close attack. Models were later shown to also be vulnerable vulnerable to corrosive acid as well as heat and extreme cold. That's Again, crazy. though the unit has to be completely destroyed or all of the remaining parts will simply reform and continue their mission. T-3000 First appearing in 2015's Terminator Genesis, the T-3000 is a human being. Thousand. Yeah, first the T-3000 is just like ridiculous. That's like at this point, if none of these models can just like destroy or stop the humans, you just because this one's super badass. If this can't do it, it's time to give up. Appearing in 2015's Terminator like, Genesis. Skynet, you lost. Just let humanity exist. It's time for coexistence. This isn't if the 3000 cannot do it, I don't know what can. Sis, the T3000 is a human being that is exposed to machine phase matter and restructured on a cellular level. Through this process, all of the cells within the human body are transformed into nanomachines. The T3000 is shown to have considerably superior strength and agility to previous Terminator models, such as the T-800 and its nanomachine structure, allows it to dissemble and reassemble itself with great ease and speed. Essentially, it has the ability to turn to dust and simply phase through attacks. The T-3000's main vulnerability is any kind of electrical or magnetic disruption powerful enough to interfere with its nanomachines, reordering themselves into the correct sequence. An MRI machine, for example, is shown to be highly effective for a short period of time. The model in Terminator Genesis, which was once Resistance leader John Connor, is destroyed by being placed into a Skynet time machine that is incapable of handling exposed metal. T-1 million Perhaps the rarest of all the T models, the T-1 million, if you hadn't guessed, is everything Skynet can throw at you and its last line of defense. The towering purely liquid metal spider hides as a solid part of Skynet's central computer and detaches itself when its core mainframe is threatened. The T-1 million is a lesser known model that only appeared on screen at the end of Terminator 2 3D. Battle Across Time, a movie attraction at Universal Studios. If you've never had the pleasure of experiencing Battle Across Time yourself, it's quite the nostalgic ride. An experience made all the more rare these days by the closure of both attractions in North America. You can now only see it at Universal Studios Japan. That is crazy. It's crazy how you have all these different models and they still can't destroy the human race. Nonetheless, great video. Amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, in peace.